so beautiful. I will never forget it. Imprint, imprint, never forget it. And I carry it with me and I try to share it with people when I can because it's like, oh man, I can't explain it. I remember it. And all of my life, I've been left with wonderful, wonderful experiences of all nature. I had to look at one of the worst things I ever had to see in my life when I was 27 years old. Wow. My little brother, Mickey, his name was Mike, the archangel. Mickey was an artist and a saxophonist, which is why I play saxophone to this day. Well, let's hear it. Let me tell you this, I, my saxophone's at home. How about the flute? Oh yeah, I'm gonna play it for you. But let me tell you this first. Mickey came to my house on his birthday, December 4th, 1975. Opened the door, because I was sitting in the house like this. Oh man, something's going on, I can't figure it out. Thinking about my grandfather, I was his old. My brother knocks on the door, I open the door, and I'm still looking like that. He said, Ken, come on, man. It's my birthday. I said, oh, Mickey, happy birthday, man. Come on in. Come in, we sit down and talk. And a nice little talk for about half an hour. I had a gig that night, I'm a bass player. Mickey, come on down and sit in with the band, you know? Okay, man, cool. We got to the front porch when he was leaving. The very last words he spoke to me that day, he said, on the porch, it's a can. When I go, it's gonna look ugly. Don't let it throw you. So like, okay, Mickey, I took it in, but it's like, don't let it throw you. Okay. Come on, man. So I go like, okay. He leaves. I sit back down. And I back into my little, you know, what's going on here. I look around the apartment. Ain't nobody been there but me and him. I didn't see him go over there. But I look over there in my acoustic guitar. He got somebody put my pocket Bible inside my guitar strings. I said, Mickey left me a message. He's saying, keep playing the music, and keep your faith in God. I said, I got the message, okay, cool. So then, that night we played the gig. Look at the Okay, I go home, I'm in bed sleeping. Three o'clock in the morning, ding, ding, ding. Pick up the phone, you better come down quick. What's up? The brother's down. What? Is he breathing, Chico? No, not breathing. I said, okay. Hang up the phone. Call my mom. You better go quick. I'm going down. I get in my 1968 Buick Riviera that I bought for my birthday. The first time ever, for no reason whatsoever. It don't start. Damn. I'm in my 1950 Pontiac ambulance that I used to ride the band around in. Turn the key, push the button. Boom! Haven't started in in months. Okay. Drive down there, I get to the Santa Monica and Genesee. One sheriff standing out there. I say, hey, that's my brother, I'm gonna see him. He said, oh no, you can't go over there. But I seen my brother when I drove up. He said, you can't go over there. I looked him in the eye. That's my brother, and I'm going over there. And I walked over there and looked at him. He didn't say nothing, he said, I walked and looked at my brother, there he is laying there, bullet hole in the head. I said to myself, okay now, I'm not responsible. I'm crazy now, I'm cuckoo. When my mom came, I walked over to her and said, Mommy, Mickey's dead. My mom's so strong. She said, pull yourself together, son. She knew I was trying to go crazy. And I thought to my, I said, damn it, I can't even go crazy. Then I said, I said, but mom, I got a gig tonight. She said, 
The show must go on. <laughs> Had Let's hear it. Let's hear the show. Let's hear the music. Had a great show that night. Had a great show. No, no. Through, not time for the music yet. You got to hear the rest of the story. Okay. You heard of the rest of the story? Yes. Now we get to the rest of the story. Three days later, I get a call from my friend Steve in Washington, D.C. Haven't seen him in over five years. What's up, man? Oh, man. Mickey's dead. What? How'd he die? Put a hole in the head. Just like the painting. I forgot about the painting that he had drawn that I used to ask him. Mickey, why did you draw this painting with you with a bullet hole in your head? He never answered that question to me. He would always change the subject. I forgot that I asked him and it's like, when Steve said, just like the painting, I went like, he said, I'll be back, I'll be out in three days. He hopped on a plane and brought me the painting, which I have at my place. If I had my cell phone, I could show you now, but I don't. I look at the painting, my friend Chico, who was the one who called me that night that he got killed. His mother was Eastern Star, like the Masons. She said, now your brother left you a wonderful gift. I could read it for you. But if you study it, you can read it yourself. I said, I'll, I'll read it for myself. Thank you. And it didn't take me an instant to see what he was saying because at, we called it the flag painting. Because it's a big American flag. Red, white, and blue, right? At the very bottom. Come here, baby girl. I want you to stand right here. Now just be cool. At the bottom, there's my little brother looking exactly the way he looked that night when I looked on his face. Looking exactly like that. Eyes open, blood here, blood here, blood out of his mouth. I look on his, in his eyes, it's like, okay, I don't see no fear, I don't see no anger. All I see in that carcass is absence of spirit. His spirit's out. Then I look above that, this am amazing life. I look above that, oh, first of all, the blood that comes out of his body makes up the red stripes in the American flag. Right up above his head, where his head's laying there, up, the American flag is on fire. I'm seeing it for myself, okay? Here's the American flag on fire, Mickey's dead. I look above that, right over here, in blue, spiritual color light. His profile. You can see his profile. You can look at. Well, that's that's his, that's him on the side view. Spirit rising. What? And you look above that. Big star. In the middle of the star, one eye, the all-seeing eye. You heard about it. The all-seeing eye checking everything out. No yay, no nay, just observation. Then the all-seeing eye. Up here into the corner. This is where the real blessing that I got. And I take it with me all my days. Over here in the corner, little face with a star on it. Gray hair. That's my grandmother, mama. She's the one who taught me to say my prayer. She died in 1961. Everybody loved her dearly. So how come, how come you're not crying? Three o'clock in the morning when we got the news. I'm not crying. I done said to them, my brothers and sisters, they all tripping, they all yelling, ah! I was like, why you ain't crying? You didn't love her like we did. <laughs> they have no idea how much I love her. I didn't, she's not suffering, you know? I was like, okay. Now, in the middle, another little face with a star on it. Salt and pepper hair, gray and black. My cousin Charles Jean Atkins, I say his full name for that one. He died because he was in a room with two other men. One man had a gun. He said, Charles, I'm gonna kill no. That was my cousin's best friend since they was a kid, two years old. I don't have a beef with you. If you leave, cool. But if you stay, I'm gonna have to kill you too. 
and he died because he wouldn't leave his friend. The guy shot my cousin first, then he shot Nara. He laid them side by side and pumped seven bullets into each of them. Had to reload. That's why he died. No greater love than he who would give up his life for his friend. Then over here on the left, all black hair. That's my brother. He died the day after his 23rd birthday. The gift. Each one of those little faces with the star on it. Each one of those faces. <laughs> Big, beautiful smile on each one of those faces. I look at that painting every day. I have it right in my living room. I look at it every day. I see it. I say, yeah. He left me that wonderful blessing gift that I take with me all my days and share it when I can. Because, like I said, one thing I look at a lot, too. Hey, I ain't the brightest light bulb in the damn path. I'm just a regular guy. So I can have all of these different experiences that I call quite miraculous, you know, in all kind of ways. Yeah, because we all, I feel we all have possibilities of this. And there's much more to this world than we see in the night. Life is a blessing. <laughs> I thank you guys for letting me share this with you, brother.